Okay, what's up, everybody? It's Sammy Caps. How are ya? Don't mind the Diablo 2 music playing in the background. I thought it'd be appropriate for me to include this music in the background. Why? Well, the Diablo 4 PTR is finally over. I've taken 24 hours after fully trying out the PTR for the full week. And I took a day to kind of take everything in and take my notes, put it all and wrap it up and nice in a package. I'm going to put it in this video. I'm going to go over the good and what needs tinkering and improving. And I thought, what greater way to express my feedback to Activision Blizzard King than to have probably the best game they've ever made, in my humble opinion. And that is Diablo 2. Holds a very special place in my heart and on my shirt. Um, so forgive the little brag about this game. But this is more about Diablo 4. Anyway, I hope you'll join me and stick around. We got a lot to talk about. We'll see you on the other side. All right. So, like I said, I participated in the Diablo 4 PTR. By the way, Activision Blizzard King, thank you for giving me the opportunity along with everyone else that was able to participate. It was a fun week. I got to say, I had a lot of fun. And after hearing all the good things from the campfire chat, it was nice to tie in that optimism into actually in-game experience. So thank you. I appreciate it. Now, what I'm going to be covering in this video is my thoughts on my experiences through the PTR. What was good? and what needs tinkering fixing is kind of how the tone of this uh, video is going to go so the good first of all the world tier buffs basically every world tier has received a 50 percent buff and this is going to make leveling a character faster the other good thing is leveling a character is going to be way faster uh, so that is going to be very good. A lot more players, when Season 4 comes, are going to be able to get to level 100 because of these two things. Also, Helltides. Big check mark. They are high density, lots of mobs. There's now three Helltide threat tiers, which increase the danger and frequency of monsters and they're ambushing you and this ambush climates to the arrival of a blood maiden the xp is excellent the mob density is amazing there's a ton of events bottom line big big check mark on helltides reborn as they phrased it in their communication helltides are going to be probably the <laughs> the event that everyone runs if you're looking at maximizing your XP and getting to 100 quickly. So big, big check mark on the Helltides. The other thing, and I've discussed this in several other videos of mine, and that is the new itemization that's been introduced. This itemization not only creates this itemization gameplay loop that I've outlined in previous videos but it also provides character customization something we've never felt in diablo 4. so to me this is a huge big win a huge check mark the new itemization that's coming to diablo 4 is a great starting point and a nice foundation for the game to build off of so a big check mark i like the itemization that's being introduced to Diablo 4 in season four. This also, this topic is also gonna come on the what needs fine tuning and fixing, but I'll elaborate more further. The Codex of Power, also a good thing. The changes that they've done to the Codex of Power. So basically all legendary aspects now appear in the Codex of Power. The UI has been revamped to include and it also includes the tempering uh, manuals, the tempering recipes, and there's a search functionality in the UI. Um, but so what does that mean? Basically, legendary aspects now 
are available to us. We don't have to carry them around in our inventory. And oh, by the way, <laughs> we don't have to carry them in our inventory and they're available to us right away. And the only thing is the highest roll legendary you salvage is stored in the Codex of Power. So early on, we're going to have the lower level aspects, but as you progress through the game and you salvage higher tier aspects, that's going to be in our Codex of Power, which we can use endlessly over and over. Another big win. And like I said, I'm going to repeat this a couple of times. Not carrying them around in our inventory frees up inventory. No brainer. Um, so kind of a quality of life improvement there. So the Codex of Power changes, big check mark. To me, these are the good things that stuck out to me, that stand out to me, sorry, in my experience with the PTR. Now, wrap that all up. And if I could do like a last sentence or a paragraph to all the good things I just said, when you wrap it all up, basically this gives an experience that provides some purpose and, and some replayability in, in my eyes. Um, to Diablo 4, something that really hasn't existed in the past. Again, that's my opinion. Um, so all these good things that I highlighted here are, are, are adding to the foundation of Diablo 4 and really set a nice foundation for this game to build off of. Okay, so that's the good. What needs refining? What needs improvements in my humble opinion? Um, so tempering, uh, tempering, there's a couple of things I want to talk about tempering. First of all, <laughs> there's 262 tempering manuals that you need to find. Now I, you know, one week isn't enough time to test how quickly we're going to be able to get these 262 tempering manuals. Now I want to say, I hope that the drop rate for the tempering manuals is relatively high. I'm not saying we should get every single tempering manual, all 262 of them, by the time we get to level 100. But I would hope there's a good mix and a high drop rate of these tempering manuals. Now, I can tell you with my one week experience of the PTR, the majority of the tempering manuals, the highest rewards of tempering manuals, what event was Nightmare Dungeon. So um, I hope it's spread out with all the activities and I hope the drop rate is high for these tempering manuals. There's nothing worse than tempering a piece of uh, gear or a weapon. And there are different categories. There's damage, uh, manuals, there's utility manuals, there's resource manuals, and you want to put a certain affix on an item and you don't have the tempering manual. Um, so I hope the rate of return when you're doing events like Nightmare Dungeons and Hell Tides, et cetera, et cetera, and the bosses and the pit, that these tempering manuals are dropping at a consistent rate. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to do I love the fact, I know a lot of people are harping on the fact that, you know, rare items now only have two affixes, legendaries now have, legendary hires have three. I personally love the offset to that. So yes, we did lose that. We did lose damage reduction. <laughs> yes. However, the fact that we now can choose what two affixes to put on gear and weapons, I like that trade-off personally um but the thing that i would love to have in 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 the tempering and something maybe activision blizzard can think about is the fact it would be nice to have some sort of material or resource that we get and it obviously a low drop rate we shouldn't have a million of these resources or materials but whatever they want to name it that grants the replacement of a selected affix, one we choose, one that comes on the gear and it's not part of the two that we can temper on, but 
one piece, one resource that we can select one FX that's on our gear and say, you know what? I like that it has lightning resistance, but I want to put poison resistance or I want to put crit damage, for example. Okay. Something that will allow us to target one FX and replace it. Uh, I think that would be a very nice addition to the tempering process that exists. Um, and other than that, I'm okay with uh, tempering. Again, I say that with a grain of salt. This is an introduction to itemization in Diablo 4. So with that in mind, I'm okay with it the way it is now. But I would definitely suggest that it needs to have more depth and there's got to be more uh, fluidity for the player, if that makes any sense. But I'm allowing more time for that to evolve. This is the foundation of itemization right now in Diablo 4. So it's an entry level system in my eyes. Um, so I'm good with the way it is. It would be nice to target one affix that we want to replace. Okay. Master working. Um, this is where we get a couple of more improvements that required. Again, I applaud the mechanic of master working because it correlates with customizing characters and uh, players being able to customize their characters to their play styles, right? So I, 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 I applaud the mechanic. However, the required material is costly. Now, why? Well, because the failure rate is too high. So as you may or may not know, master working an item, there's 12 ranks right in the master working. And every rank has a success rate on whether or not you're successful on ranking up the affixes on that gear. So the first four ranks are 100% success rate. Rank five to rank 12, go down to 70%, all the way down to 10% as you go up the ranks. And if you fail, it the good thing is it bumps you up to the higher success rate. However, you're failing a lot. And when you're failing a lot, that means a lot of clicking on the UI. And it also means you're burning through the resources that it costs to master work an item. So I think the success rate has to be fine tuned. I think it's too harsh and it needs to be recalculated going down all the way to 10, 20%, 30%. That is, Ooh. And, and this is where we're getting to the higher ranks, right? Rank eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So at rank four, rank eight, and rank 12, this is where we get a random affix on the gear that you're master working. One random will be bumped up 25%. Okay, so I think the cost, uh, also the cost is too high with the resources when you add in the fact that there's a high failure rate. So that success rate, failure rate formula between one and 12, it needs to be revamped and too much clicking on the UI. I don't have a suggestion for it because I don't know how you get around it, to be honest with you. You got to click, you got to click. Um, at the end of the day, I'm fine if they can't fix the amount of clicking and reduce the clicking, but maybe if they fix the first problem and that is the high failure rate because the drop off the success rate goes lower and lower as you get higher on the rank of the master working gear. Maybe if that gets fixed, then we're not clicking as much. And the first one takes care of the second problem, if you know what I mean. But to me, the master working of those things that I just mentioned, those need refinement and improvements. Now, the boss ladder and the tormented bosses I'm going to put together. First of all, there are the the tormented bosses are amazing fights. They're longer fights. I don't think they're going to be as long as what players are experiencing during the PTR because at the end of the day, 
these players that grind the crap out of Diablo 4 are going to find mega, mega, mega builds that will literally melt these Torment bosses, these level 200 bosses. Um, but that's another day. They're amazing fights, but I'm not going to get into every, <laughs> you know, I'll flash all the uh, boss ladder bosses and just to show you all the different requirements that are required material wise for all these boss ladder bosses, but also the tormented bosses, they're amazing fights, but the cost associated the material cost is way too high. And in some cases, the rewards don't match the time required in order to farm these materials. I'm not going to get deep into the weeds with this uh, issue. All I can say is because at the end of the day, Activision Blister King know exactly what I'm talking about because they've set the parameters around what's required in order to summon Duriel in order to summon Lord of Zir. They know this is the materials you need as you see flashing through the screen here. These are all the different bosses and all the different materials that you need. What's not in these flashcards is the amount of time a player has to spend to farm them, whether you're grinding nightmare dungeons over and over, whether you're <laughs> whether you're running hell tides over and over to open up the cash to get the materials that you need to summon these bosses this is an endless loop of grinding which great i love grindy games however sometimes in these boss ladder fights and these tormented bosses the rewards don't match the level the time commitment that's required to fight these bosses or tormented bosses. So this is where I draw the line and say, okay, I don't have a problem putting time, putting effort into this. However, if it does, if the rewards don't match the sweat factor, I have a problem with that. So this is where I think there's some sort of refinement and improvements whether you're scaling up the drop rates, whether you're lowering the materials required, a mix and match, I don't know, not a game developer. However, the, you know there's a problem when RMT comes into the game and people are RMTing in order to get the materials to fight these bosses. Right then and there, that's a red flag to me. Uh, so you know there's a problem. So that needs some sort of refinement improving and if they find the right balance then again this moves from needing to be refined and improved over to the this is good because now who doesn't want to fight the pinnacle bosses in a game everybody wants to right um so i think a little balance in this area when it comes to the boss ladder bosses and the tormented bosses i think will serve the game very well so it needs some fine tuning now the pit i know the people have referred to it as greater rifts and we all know greater rifts there's a divide there there's a lot of players that like it okay and there's a lot of players that hated it in diablo 3 um irrespective of what side you're on um, the thing is what I have found during my experience and other feedback and the research that I've found out about the pit is the fact that the higher tiers, and I've said this in my previous video, uh, tier 100 to tier 200 pit, there's just no incentive to do it because the increased difficulty is very low and the rewards don't make it worth it you you're, you're better off just staying at you know a tier 100 pit you're going to get the resources you need to master work the loot is the loot it's not improving um so i if you're going to have two the tier 200 level in the pit then make it be representative of the fact that it's a tier 200 it's the top of the top Right now, it's not. 
so somehow they need to figure out how to improve the 100 plus to 200 tier in the pit. Now, in my previous video, I suggested they do an incremental increase in the difficulty and in the drop rate. Again, I'm not a game developer, but they could do some small formula, you know, 5% increase, 10% increase in the master working resources, for example, even the loot itself. Why not, you know, increase the loot table in the pit? Maybe, hello, here's a new one that just popped into my head. Why is it that only Nightmare Dungeons grants XP to our glyphs? Maybe introduce the pit into that circle of gaining XP for glyphs. So we're not stuck just running Nightmare Dungeons. Again, off the top of my head, things that I'm thinking about. But these are little things. And again, here you go. Maybe if you do make it that the pit now gives XP to the glyphs, maybe you increase the level of XP glyphs are getting as you're leveling up the t you're going higher up on the tiers in the pit so if you're running a 100 and tier 150 pit you're getting way more experience on your glyph than you are if you were running a one a tier 100 pit you see where i'm going with this there are many ways you can slice and dice this it's just a willingness to do it so to me the pit requires some sort of refinement in the one hundred to two hundred tier level it just the um, the rewards don't match the so-called level of difficulty which it's not um so there needs improvements improvements need to be put there in the pit now i just want to say i had a i had a blast during the ptr and again thank you uh, activision blizzard king for doing this the player base has been screaming for this the whole time so thank you for allowing us, the Battle.net players, <laughs> the opportunity to um, to participate in this. By the way, I, I'd be remiss not to bring this up. I have a lot of players in my community that are console players, and they're very upset at the fact that they were not included in the PTR. I would hope in the future you would include them since they probably are your biggest player pool. Um, I don't know, maybe that's why you didn't include them. You wanted a small test base, and I and I understand that. But anyway, I, I want to represent my community, so just wanted you to know that, and I'm sure you already do. Now, I do want to include a bonus suggestion, and this may or may not be popular with the people that are going to watch this video, but this is a personal favorite that I would like to have implemented in Diablo 4. And I know it's typical that you do not see MMO type mechanics in an ARPG, but I personally have, have had some of the best experiences in video games during this mechanic, these this mechanic that are in MMOs, and that is rating. I know in a past data mine leak, it has been presented that you guys are thinking about that. Uh, I hope you are selfishly. I've had some of my best experiences raiding in games. Wow, Destiny, Lost Ark, I can go on and on. I love raiding. I think if you were to introduce raiding into Diablo 4, it brings in so many pluses to the game i could go on and on talking about what it brings it brings purpose replayability because every week we're grinding that raid you could add different levels of raid uh, like i can go on and on the rewards set items like it's it's endless the possibility so selfishly i have a bonus suggestion which obviously is not in the ptr whether or not you guys are thinking about it, I would love to see raids in Diablo 4. And I hope that that a mine leak we heard about many, many moons ago is true, that you are thinking about uh, putting raids in Diablo 4. That would be amazing. Okay, anyway, that's it, everybody. I wanted to do this video to highlight 
my experiences through the PTR, which I have already done several videos on it during the week, but I wanted to sum up the whole thing with my takeaway from the PTR. Things that were check marks and are good. They're good, they're good like they are. And I'm super excited that these good things are coming to Diablo 4. And then I also wanted to talk about a couple of things that require refining, improving. And if you participated in the PTR, please make sure that you submitted your feedback to Activision Blizzard King. They want it. They deserve it. They're asking for it. So you should give it to them. Anyway, that's it. Let me know what you think about my list. And if you did participate in the PTR... Is my list like your list? Is there something I forgot? Let me know. Get in the comments section. I'd love to hear everyone's comments on this. And as always, I want to thank you for watching my videos. And if you could like, comment, and subscribe, it'll help grow my channel so more people can hear my feedback. <laughs> um, so yeah, and my message, of course. So thank you for watching, everybody. And as always, we'll hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.